Yes, sir. Yes, the red light's flashing, uh, Rear Grundy Guardian viewers. So that means we are live. Um, I'll pull the full screen up. I'm here with Josue Garcia, who his title is International Bridge Systems Director for Cameron County. That means he looks after three bridges. We're going to talk about his career. But as I say that he's the director, not for much longer. And that's the purpose of today's um, uh, pod, uh, live stream here, our uh, Zoom conversation, is because Josue is going to be retiring soon. And I really love the backdrop in your office there, Josue, or Josh, if I can call you that. I can, yes, see, yes. I can see the trucks crossing the bridge. Uh -huh. um, tell us, let's start off. It seems as though you're going to be sort of retiring from your position there soon. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, uh, my name is uh, Josue Garcia, or a lot of people know me as Josh. Uh, you know, first of all, I'd like to, you know, thank God for blessing me so much during my career. Um, you know, it's, I feel very privileged. Uh, you know, I've been married for 40 years to my wife, uh, Elva Plata Garcia, and uh, together we have uh, four children and, and three grandchildren. Um, and and so you know my uh, my career here at uh, at Cameron County is, is ending, and I think that you know I've had a good one uh, here, uh, Steve. Uh, when is your last day? My last day is uh, August uh, September the twenty fourth. So that's next just, Friday. Yeah, just around the corner. Yes, sir. Well, we really appreciate you, Josh, giving us some time today to tell us a little bit about your career. Uh, to tell us, our, our viewers, our readers all about, about you, because um, every time I've connected with you at different events, um, you've been so hospitable and helpful to us, uh, trying to learn the, learn the issues and write, a, write about the issues, international trade and, um, and your expertise on, on bridge movements. And so we're going to get into that today in, in this conversation. But let, I want to start out, if I may, uh, with the early days, uh, you were born in San Benito, uh, went to San Benito High School, went off to uh, college in um, San Marcos, mm -hmm. but initially it was not, you were not studying business. Like so many in San Benito, you were a very talented musician. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, well, yes. Uh, yeah, we, uh, in, in, during, during my, my years and going through school in San Benito, I was introduced to band. I used to play the trombone. And, and so uh, when I was a senior, we auditioned uh, over at Southwest Texas State University, which is now Texas State. Uh, and, uh, and fortunately for me, I obtained a music scholarship. Um, so off I went to San Marcos to study music. Um, and, and during my time there, I really, uh, you know, appreciated, you know, that opportunity and, and it opened a, a lot of uh, uh, windows and doors in, in my life and the opportunity to see a lot of things, you know, coming from down here in the, in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, you know, I, 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 the first eight years of my life were really spent um, real close to the river about about as a pro flies, maybe about a mile from where currently the Free Trade International Bridge sits right now. So, so you know, I I I I've, I've been down here, and you know, this I've been down here all my life, and and I appreciate that, uh, you know, the values and everything that I've learned, um, you know, during during this time, uh, Steve. So, what was life? What was life like uh, growing up in San Benito back then? Um, uh, uh, obviously a much more rural Rio Grande Valley than we have today. Um, very fond childhood memories? Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we had a, a lot of uh, uh, friends and we, we did a lot of walking. We walked everywhere. Uh, I remember walking at least a couple of miles to school when I lived there in Los Indios in grades one to three. Uh, and then in fourth, we went to live in, in the actual city, but uh, you, you walked everywhere. And, uh, and, and, and when you hear people saying that, you know, they didn't like their homes, well, that was us. You know, you never liked your homes. You, you never liked your car. You went everywhere. And, 
and everything was as you had left it. So, so yeah, it, it was a different era altogether and, and certainly one that I really appreciated to have been through. It, it really, I think, uh, cemented a lot of your uh, convictions, a lot of the things that, that in later in life would, would really come to help. So uh, let's go back to Southwest Texas State, as it was then called San, San, in San Marcos. Um, you went up there to study music, but uh, pretty soon decided business was a safer option or, you know, probably a better career move. What, do you, what, was, the, what was your thinking and what did you do? Yes, um, you know, th this is, uh, you know, God works in mysterious ways. There, there, my, my, one of my professors there uh, at Southwest Texas State uh, in, uh, in English um, used to play baseball for Pan American University. And, and then so he kind of took an interest in me because obviously he, you know, he, he you know, he's, he says, well, you know, you have a great university down there. Uh, um, so what are you, uh, you know, so, you know, so during the conversations that we had, you know, I, I started to look at, at different uh, careers and, and, and seeing, uh, you know, what went on. And so it was later in that spring semester that I, uh, that I decided that I wanted to uh, to switch careers and um, and and go in, into business, and, and at the same time, you know, in looking at both schools, uh, Pan American, which was about 40 miles, 40 45 miles from my home, I said, well, you know, I think I'll just get a, a as good an education uh, down there, and, and so I did, and I have no regrets. Yes, you got you got a degree in business, and um, tell us a little bit about the the qualifications you gained at Pan Am, as it was called then, and uh, where did that take you? Where did you where did you go after college? Yes, um, well, well, after being there for for the whole four years, and then you know, obviously doing my my uh, my masters in the evening. Uh, my first job was at Marathon Laterno uh, at, at the Port of Brownsville, which was great for me because I got to live in my parents' home. Um, and that's, uh, and again, uh, Steve, you know, a lot of this is all about relationships. Uh, uh, the personnel manager, uh, we were studying together, the MBA, and he says, you know, what are you doing? I says, well, I'm, this is what I'm looking at. He says, come and, come and visit with me tomorrow, and, and the rest is history. He said, "You know, uh, <laughs> you have a job, and uh, and lo and behold, I was, you, you know, uh, obviously, my college friends. We would all talk about what we were doing, how much we were earning at that time, and uh, and so I was like making top dollar and still being at home. I didn't have to leave the valley, so that was great for me. That that was really a great opportunity. Yeah, and so you embarked on this career in in." international trade basically you you work for different maquilas uh you are manager of you know what they call the shelter operations in in matamoros um tell us a little bit about those days yeah, yes um uh, you know ha having worked there uh, at Kemet electronics for 17 plus years uh, you know i was able to uh, what did you rise to there? What was your position when you left there? Well, it was purchasing manager, and I was also in charge of import export. Um, so that really is really where it really began. Uh, you know, it, it gave me opportunity because I got to learn uh, the laws of importations of not only the U.S. but Mexico as well, and so that that kind of opened all kinds of windows for me, um, and so. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I work uh, production control and production and, and distribution, uh, but but uh, you know, purchasing and import export were always the base for a lot of things that I that I did, uh, and and definitely even the things that I'm doing today, um, I, I I have knowledge of how the workings are of, of Mexican customs and and other things because of what I learned. You know, back when I was working at Kemet Electronics as an import-export manager. Mm -hmm. 
And then I know after that, um, you, like we said, you're working with Fuji um, later on and uh, basically been in charge of these shelter operations as the Makila, Makila Dora's um, factories were being built. Um, you, were, you were in charge of those for a, for a number of sort of Fortune 500 very well-known companies. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, at, at Kemet, you know, obviously you make relationships and two gentlemen and myself, we partnered together to open up uh, the company, the shelter operation. So we were it. I mean, you know, it all, everything hinged on us. At, at one point we had uh, 600 employees um, and, and, and we're doing a lot of, you know, the, this, you know, this, as you mentioned, the shelter operation, uh, working for Fuji and, uh, and, and also one of the things is uh, we also got hired uh, by IBM to put some uh, racks together. And, and according to IBM, uh, of which we were very proud was the fact that um, this was the first time ever that IBM had, had authorized anybody to send uh, any of their products without it being inspected by an IBM person before it left. So, I mean, that was critical and, and we were very fortunate and happy that we were able to do it for them. Uh, and so we would send it to the, uh, to the end customer that IBM would, would ask us to do it. Um, and soon after that, we were bought, you know, after about five years, we were bought out by, by a Japanese company that came in. And so in addition to those, it added uh, the component of uh, 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 plastic injection molding. So then not only were we doing the cameras and, and, the, and the racks, we were also doing the, uh, the, uh, the motors that, that moves the mirrors on Toyota products throughout the United States. And that's what we were doing. Um, and so then came the, down, the economic downturn uh, you know, that started in eight, nine, and the beginning of 10. So they, they moved their Matamoros operation to Tijuana, which was a, a bigger operation over there. They consolidated their, their company. And obviously they asked me to go with them, but I, I did not want to leave their area. So, uh, so that's, that's when I, uh, I found uh, and applied for the position at, uh, in Donna. Yeah, before we get on to Donna, because I'm very, very interested in, in what you experienced there. Uh, an incredible opportunity to 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 run that bridge system, but um, like you said, you would you were being tasked with um, ensuring uh, the product quality of, of products for IBM, um, and you weren't even working for IBM. That must have been tremendous responsibility for you and your colleagues. Definitely, definitely, and uh, you know we uh, we took it very seriously. Obviously, starting from they had, you know, including the the pallets and, uh, that we set them on. And this was about the time that, you know, you had to have the wood treated to transport wood, uh, you know, between countries. So that was an added dimension that we had to, to do. And, and so uh, uh, we, would, we, would get, we would get people from England to come uh, and help us out there. We would get the product from England and, uh, and then they would send it to us in Brownsville. We put it in Matamoros, we put it together and then we send it out. So part of the deal is where they would come in and kind of inspect because we wanted to make sure that we, what we're doing, you know, is exactly what IBM wanted. And IBM made several trips and they, they said, we have no issues. So, um, you know, our quality was, was top notch. Uh, you know, we, we made sure that uh, at, at whatever cost, you know, the quality had to be there because we needed to ensure that that the orders would keep coming in. So uh, obviously that was a, a, a great um, area that, that we really focused on. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on now to Donna. Like you say, I, I believe you were at Donna for six years. What, what stage was the um, development of the Donna Rio Bravo International Bridge when you arrived? And um, at what stage was it six years later when you left? Uh, we, let me, we have a motion. Let me, let me turn the lights on. Cause yeah. 
the lights turn off if they don't sense any motion in my office. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. yeah. No problem. So, uh, so with Donna, the bridge opened uh, December 14 of 20, 2010. I came to work uh, January the 11th of 2011, which, you know, not even a month after is when I was hired. Um, and, and so uh, it, it was a great opportunity. Obviously, I had no clue what being a bridge director was at that point. And, um, um, and uh, I mean, I was blessed to have uh, contacts of people that I could call and, and ask questions of. And, and so, uh, you know, the, the leadership there in Donna is very supportive of everything that we do. Uh, and, and so, yes, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a great experience there. I, 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 I really liked that experience because it was something that we kind of put, you know, really put together and, and, and build it up from, from the ground up. Um, and so it, 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 was, it is a bridge that's only for, for passenger traffic and, and, and pedestrians. And it's still in the process of getting uh, uh, per permission to cross uh, uh, commercial traffic. Well, we laid the groundwork for that uh, in, in getting the permits, working through TxDOT and getting some funding to, uh, uh, you know, and I guess I must say here, Steve, as uh, you know, it's not something that, you know, it takes a team to build this. I, I was just one small piece of, of the whole process, okay? Uh, you know, I, I just happened to be at that place and, and, and kind of moved with a group uh, and, and try to advance, you know, this, this uh, opportunity that was presented to us. And, and so uh, we, we, we think that, uh, you know, we, we got the funding and, and I think now the southbound uh, commercial traffic uh, the installation is, is built. It, it's there waiting for approval for Mexico to receive uh, commercial traffic. And, and obviously, I, I, I am proud of that. I mean, that, that I, I'm very happy for, for, for the citizens of the Donna because, you know, they, they, they've waited for so long and, and they deserve to have uh, this international bridge. Yeah. Uh, my recollections back then uh, were that, and I think we wrote about this at the time, was the people of Donna sort of couldn't believe it. You know, they, there'd been so many false dawns. Uh, the presidential yes. permit had been there for some time and nothing ever seemed to happen. And so the leadership was promising, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, it's, it's gonna happen. And finally it did. And it was, there was perhaps a state of disbelief among some people in the community, but it's, it's, um, it's progressing well. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, this uh, non-essential, uh, uh, you know, crossing that, that we have through the uh, Department of Homeland Security has, you know, it, it really restricted a lot of issues because the commercial traffic continues to flow, but, but, the, but the traffic that, you know, the, the tourism, the visitors, the everything else, and, and that so, you know, as it has affected Donna, it's affected all of us up and down the border and all of us want this, this particular thing to be lifted, but we, we don't have that. But so, you know, so that's something that they have to be wrestling with at this point in Donna as well. Uh, as I see their numbers of, uh, uh, of you know, uh, auto crossings, yeah. But, but the fact is that uh, Donna, the, its best days are, are ahead of it. Uh, the potential is huge. Um, in, with all the bridges are benefiting from the increased trade that USMCA is bringing. And so, you know, the future is, is going to be great once all those permits are in place for Donna. Right, right. You know, because in, in, as we speak, uh, I know for a fact that they're, that they're working on the northbound traffic because, I mean, that's something that needs to happen. And, and so they're working on that as well. They're putting the, they're putting the plan together, uh, the design and everything that, you know, working between both governments. And so, yes, uh, like you say, uh, you know, the, you know, the brighter things are still ahead for the Dana Rio Bravo International Bridge, definitely. Yeah, and you wish them well. Oh, of course, of course, yes, yeah. And so you then had an opportunity to, to have a similar role um, 
more responsibility because then three bridges within the Cameron County set up. Uh, you have the um, Veterans Bridge at Los Tomates, you have Gateway and the Free Trade Bridge at, at Los Indios. Um, what made you dis decide to, to take, that up, take up that offer of that position and what did you find when you got to Cameron County? Uh, you know, uh, when I was in Donna, I was not looking to move anywhere. Uh, and, and so, you know, I was approached about this position here in, in Cameron County. And obviously after much uh, prayer and thought and speaking to a lot of folks, you know, they kind of guided me to, to, to take that step. And, and I'm certainly glad that they did because it, it's been a, it, it's been a good, uh, a very good experience here. Um, um, you know, first of all, when we got here, uh, we, we, we've done a lot of work to do the, uh, the infrastructures of the areas, not necessarily the, 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 the bridge proper, but all, the, all that it takes to, you know, all the administration buildings. And, and so we, we did a lot of work in all of the administration buildings, make it, um, make it more welcoming for our, for, for our workers for the associates that work uh, here. Uh, and, and so we did a lot of whole bunch of revisions. Uh, and one of, the, one of the very first uh, projects that we were tasked, uh, the primary project was uh, what, what, what the Customs and Border Protection, uh, Pro Protection calls the, uh, the POV 2017 DAP uh, Donations Acceptance Program of the Primary and Secondary Passenger vehicle inspection station. So what it effectively does it, it, you have four northbound uh, uh, lanes coming into veterans and effectively it's going to double the amount. And so the project is already, uh, it's, it's being ready to, to be let. And, and so this process is gonna start this coming February. So everything is set, the design is set, the, uh, uh, all of the, uh, all of the, the funds needed have been allocated. So we're just waiting for, for, for that date to come, to, to come around. So, so when I came here, that was my number one task. And, and so I, I'm happy to report that, you know, that that's going to that's gonna get done. It is just a, a kind of two, three months uh, in the future. And, and, you know, so this is about a $15 million project that, that, that's going to take place. We've also... Uh, done uh, the fast lane expansion on the same bridge, Veterans International, uh, and that is uh, where we have the uh, the multimodal uh, two pieces of equipment that's worth about seven million dollars that was put in by by CBP, which is the latest in technology. It's uh, three dimensional, it's color, uh, and this is the pilot program for all of CBP uh, all across uh, the United States on both borders northern and southern border. So we are extremely uh, happy that this happened here in our, in our watch and in our bridge, uh, one of our bridges here. And, and we, we really, uh, you know, uh, am thankful for that. Uh, and then as we move uh, to uh, free trade, we, we upgraded our southbound uh, commercial uh, uh, special lane, we call our special lane to make sure that you know people going southbound uh, doing commerce uh, you know would, would have a good area to, to cross, cross through we saw that we needed we have two northbound lanes we added a third lane exclusively for commercial traffic to you know we didn't want the commercial traffic to sit in line with the auto traffic so we 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 constructed a, a 1500 feet uh, uh, commercial lane northbound there as well as a cold room inspection storage there in the, at, at the free trade. Um, and we're about to start uh, any day now to start uh, talking about the uh, modification uh, also through a DAP project of the, uh, the export, the CBP export lot. Uh, so we're gonna do modifications there, um, you know, so we could do and in and, and all this process, uh, we're also looking at doing at, at uh, free trade and at veterans, 
doing the UCP unified cargo inspection with uh, Mexican customs, which in, in, uh, in veterans, we started in January and, and they're still going through that process here. Um, so they're slowly adding more units to, to, to that process. And, and hopefully that will be, once we get this DAP uh, project on the export lot, we could do the same thing there in, uh, in, uh, at free trade. Um, so, so yes, we, uh, there, there's a lot of things that were done and also the uh, GSA did a feasibility study on the Gateway International Bridge, uh, basically to uh, completely redo all of the Gateway Bridge. Uh, that bridge hasn't been looked at since it was first built in 1961. That was the latest modification. And so uh, you have a lot of people from, from uh, CBP uh, senators, uh, congressmen that have come down and they looked at it and says, we need to do something here. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of uh, Congressman, Congressman Vela's uh, priority is to get this done. And, and so I think the funding hinges on, on, uh, on, on, the, on the bill that's before Congress right now, the, the big infrastructure, uh, you know, cause that's gonna take a, about $150 million to, to do so. Uh, um, so, uh, and uh, we've also done a feasibility phys study for a fourth bridge that we're looking at, uh, which is, is the Flor de Mayo, uh, Cameron County. Uh, we don't have a presidential permit. We're just you know, looking at, you know, the county has the, the property, um, uh, the land already uh, there. So we're just, we're just, you know, doing a feasibility study and that's already been completed. And so you, you must, the leadership there must believe that there's enough business, there's enough trade, uh, and it's only growing and that uh, uh, another bridge would be needed. I mean, if they're, if they're looking at that, where, where would that, where is that land? Uh, I think if you're going down Alton Glor Road in Brownsville, it, you'll hit 281. And then right there, you have a little street called Flor de Mayo. So that is it. It goes all the way out to the river. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've, you know, obviously you, in this business, you can't do it, everything by yourself or anything really. You, you, need, uh, you need Mexico to be a part of your process. So they've already, you know, we've already uh, got Mexico involved in this as well. Uh, and and so, so they're, aware and, and they agree with where this, where, where, where are we gonna put this? Uh, you know, certainly, you know, I don't know when, but in the, in the, in the future sometime. So the, the wheels uh, are, are turning already. So, uh, um, so yeah, uh, Mexico is aware and, and there we've got letters of, uh, you know, support from uh, the city of Matamoros and, and, and the governor of Tamaulipas. And so, yeah, we, we're, uh, we're, we're starting to get the wheels rolling there. So, so you, you sort of crunch the numbers and, and, and you look at the trends. And you, like I say, you, you, the view must be that um, it's only gonna increase and therefore uh, it won't, it's not gonna take away tra uh, traffic from, from veterans or from Los Indios, you're just, you're just preparing for increased trade in, in the future years. Uh, yes, I guess, I guess I should have uh, said this at the, when I started talking about the Flor de Mayo, it, it's just going to be an auto pedestrian bridge, oh, no commercial traffic. Oh, okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yes, sir. Um, yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Well, you've got so many projects going on Yes, sir. Uh, right now, but did it make did uh, did you have to think hard as to whether you want to retire at this point with so uh, many big projects, you know, in the works? You know, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, you know, I it, it all. You always think about your your elementary school days, you know, and about the merry-go-rounds. And and if you if you thought about the merry-go-rounds, and you know, they were going real fast. You know, and then you thinking, you know, I need to get down. Uh, and, and it was really never a good time to get down because when you, when you, <laughs> when you went off, you had to, you had to leave running or otherwise you're going to fall flat on your face. 
so so same thing here uh you know it's it, it's never a good time uh i really enjoyed you know uh the time that i've been here and i hope i have helped along the way to uh to push uh, a lot of these projects uh, and and so yes i am a uh, um uh, it it's it was a very very difficult decision to make, uh, and, and so uh, but I think this is a this is a right decision at this point in time, uh, um, yeah for me. Well, be, before I let you go, I just want to go back to something you said uh, with regard to veterans and um, why do you think it was that that customs said we want to try that pilot project, the only one, the first first one of its kind on either border, why did they choose Brownsville? Um, they chose Brownsville and I asked that question, uh, Steve, and, and CVP uh, was saying we need the, the mix of everything coming into veterans was just the right amount that we needed for, for the test that, that their statisticians had looked into and they looked at all the ports and they said, you know, Veterans is a bridge we need to end sends. Uh, you know, the, the, the county through the DAP program had already, you know, done a, like a five lane uh, uh, pavement in there to their and, and build all this uh, infrastructure around it. They said, well, you know, it's there. We need to take advantage of it. So that's how it came to be. Mm. Okay. Well, um, Josh, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed um, learning more about your story. Uh, your incredible career here in the valley and the the, the contributions you've made uh, to improve um, our quality of life and uh, ensuring that the, tr the trade moves smoothly um, and, man and goods are manufactured well uh, in, in the Makila. So I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to add um, before, you, before you go? Well, you know, it, and I think I mentioned that, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I never like to use the word I when speaking because, you know, it, it's always, you know, I don't think any one person can make, you know, that much of a difference if they're not surrounded by people who, who are of like mind and wanting to do the same thing. And, and, and I, and I thank God for, for, you know, for always in, in all my professional career that I've been surrounded with people that, that, you know, we've been able to, you know, do a lot of things. And, and I was part of the group. You know, I was part of the group. I, I was part of the bunch in there, and and so I I, I was so blessed uh, to be uh, to be in that uh, you know in that situation, and I and I thank God for that. Well, thank you so much. Um, we we obviously wish you the very best in your retirement. Uh, I know you'll in, you'll you'll enjoy that, and uh, we're going to miss you. Uh, certainly going to. I'm certainly going to miss you uh, when I cover the events. Uh, down at down at your bridges and all the different trade events that we we bump into each other at but thanks again and um just we you we will we'll write some stories about this about uh, about your career now and we'll put this um this zoom broadcast out but uh josh garcia director for the international bridge system for cameron county thank you so much for today's interview thank you thank you steve i really appreciate it See you soon. Yes, sir. Mm, bye.